Have you ever wondered what the Philippines would look like in the future? Wait! I thought we're going to talk about literary elements. Yes. <clears throat> Have you ever wondered what the Philippines would look like in the future? Mm, will there be flying cars? Or maybe teleportation machines? How about time travel? Will traveling through time already be possible? Well, if you're curious about that, then let's all find the answers in the show. Welcome to Time Travel, Time to Unravel! In today's episode, we are all going to learn some literary elements as we travel through time. Because 50 years from now, in a huge dome near Manila Bay, constructed of interwoven steel rods and glass with a temperature inside almost freezing, a story wherein technology has taken over the social hierarchy and robots have replaced humans in labor works will unfold. Seeing robots around the escalator in MRT station, Delia, the main protagonist, felt grateful knowing that they can't replace her from her work. What do you mean by protagonist? Protagonist is the lead character in the story who typically makes the ultimate choice at the climax, while the antagonist is someone who opposes the protagonist and tries to prevent the build-up of the story. Let me continue the story. So Delia rolled the train and went on her way to the center, where she works and her friend Marielle joined her on the next stop. Oh, Marielle, my friend. Does she like going through the hassle of refunding an item or applying for credit? That girl never learns. She quietly thought. Where's your brother? On strike, rebelling as usual even if nobody's following him anymore. Why should anyone rebel? So maybe our lives aren't as great as those of the people we take care of. But we certainly have things a lot better than our parents did. At least everybody has a job. Would he rather farm? They complain such as lack in her grandparents' time. There's class division. And there's no way out of it unless you can afford to pay someone to take care of you for life. And that they pay us just enough to feed us and clothe us and transport ourselves to the center. So we're never going to be able to break out of the cycle. Well, that's just how things have been throughout history. Don't tell me he's becoming a Marxist. Like those people back in 60s or was it the 70s? That was a hundred years ago, and they didn't accomplish anything, did they? What type of character is Marielle? Is she the antagonist? No, apparently she isn't. But there are other types of characters like dynamic, static, flat, and round. Marielle is a flat character, and you'll know why once the story ends. Ooh, thanks! Dahlia remembered her first love, Reggie. He had big dreams and wanted to start a new society free from their government. He had tried to escape to the mountains. Delia, come with me. But she was frightened, so she refused. And a few weeks later, Reggie was found dead. Nick said it was the robotic patrol helicopters, but Delia thought otherwise. One man alone seeking freedom wasn't a threat to society, was he? Station. Station. Dahlia and Marielle entered the dome-shaped greenhouse-like building where bodies of the very rich people who had given up the ordinary life and decided to live a virtual one were protected from the stresses of daily living and pumped full of hormones their bodies hardly seemed to age. It was their duty to check on the bodies of these privileged people during the waking hours. Marielle named the person she is taking care of, Dom. But his real name is Roberto Paez, a man who likes making his virtual girlfriends jealous and always remain happy as long as he is having sex. Anyways, the woman you see beside Marielle is... No! Why are you doing this to me? No! No! A former actress. Well, Delia had one of the youngest, a man who had been a famous singer in her youth, Art. Hello, Art. Oh, she's whipped. She remembered how, like most girls, she'd had a crush on him back in high school and was devastated when he chose to retire to the center. See? 
I'm right. She's whipped. Okay, fine. And that man is another Nick. An ex-politician that was currently being taken care of by an apprentice that Bert, Delia's brother and Nick's friend, was teaching. Your job is to detect signs of complex emotions, mostly negative ones, and input them and your recommendations for relieving them. You have the emotion and symptom charts? Yes? Good. Oh, too much Nick in the story, I see. Vote for me. I will not just give you the change that you want, but the change that you need. But Adelia's brother Nick seems like a protagonist to me. While this ex-politician one is just a side character? Oh yes, Delia's brother is the other protagonist but is also considered as a round character who is a very interesting one to the audience because he feels like a real character. Round characters are convincing and seems like true to life, while this ex-politician Nick is just another flat character with one or two traits that make up their whole personality. Oh, I'm excited to know about the dynamic and around characters soon. Okay, going back to the story, Bert didn't look surprised that Dahlia's brother wasn't there, but she didn't want to risk her brother's safety by asking Bert what her brother might be up to. Delia remembered how Nick constantly challenges the system that got him into trouble in his senior high school. He also refused working at the center when he graduated, but joined her when their father was diagnosed with cancer. He didn't go to college. Nick wanted to do and major in management, but they couldn't afford it. Then what Nick said about breaking the cycle is true, right? Only the rich can have life. Sadly. But Delia's thoughts of Nick were replaced now by Art who's now talking to his virtual girlfriend. Delia knew Art never found the perfect girl for him as no one understood him. How Delia wished she had known him before he had gone virtual. She would have understood him. She was sure. And could have been a friend to him. Maybe he would have found the perfect girl in her. She wondered what his virtual girlfriend was like. Lucky or who can go to the party class that is nowhere to be found now in Manila. I wouldn't mind living a virtual life myself. She thought. In her virtual world, she would live in the beautiful green suburbs. She would be married to Reggie, whom she had never forgotten. They would have two or three children. But of course, one thing the computer couldn't recreate was Reggie and the experience of having him by her side. Like the other workers, Delia found her way to the MRT station when the bell rang. Wait, is that Nick? No, no, I must be hallucinating. Delia thought she saw Nick, but put the idea aside and just continued on her way. But the moment she reached into her pocket for the wallet, she found none. She retraced her steps and went all the way back to Art's place. There. She found the wallet on the floor under her chair and herself mesmerized by the smiling and murmuring art beside her. I love you. She impulsively bent and kissed him. And as the last alarm echoed in the dome, indicating that workers should hurry home, Delia sprinted towards the door and was surprised with an ear speeding explosion. Windows were shattered. All the alarms were blazing. Delia crouched against the door and screamed, What have you done? No, I can't believe I set off the bombs too early. My fault for being too excited. Are you alright, Del? Guess you're alright. Delia was confused. She wanted to know how to tell the authorities once they barged in about the mess that happened, but she was startled when Nick started unstrapping the bodies in the center and pulling off electrodes from them. Some of these people could die. They're the ones who have entrapped us in our lives, Delia. Because of them, we've lost our freedom to choose how we'll make a living. Our entire lives center around taking care of the rich so their money will take care of us. What's wrong with that? It seems like a fair arrangement to me anyway. I was always happy with it. Are you happy that they controlled the government? That they made the rules before they went out like this and will continue to follow them like programmed robots? 
We're kept so busy by their demands that we've even stopped noticing what an unhealthy place the real world is becoming. So what? Someday, we could go virtual too. If everyone were living in a virtual world, who would keep people alive? They've set up the system in such a way that we can't ever get out, so we'll always be there to look after them. Why do you think higher education is so expensive? So, the lower classes would learn how to operate supercomputers and complex machines, and we can sabotage them either. And of course, we are taught by our middle class teachers who have been bribed by the promise of an eternal virtual life. After retirement that the system is perfect. Perfect for those people maybe, but not for us. Come on, buddy. It's time to see what's happened to the real world since you've gone. Ow! Delia went to Art and told him not to be scared, while Nick, he entrapped the ex-politician. What is this, a morgue? It's a work for people who just want to rest. I'm starving. Delia pointed the food located at the locker, while the ex-politician, successfully freed, collapsed after having a heart attack because of the sudden shock of being unstrapped. She told Nick to stop freeing them but Nick, being Nick, he didn't listen. Delia attended to the other Nick and continued CPR until he heard a heartbeat while Nick continued unstrapping the people. What's your name? Delia. I already know your art. Do I know you? I'm a fan. Don't lie to them. How can I accomplish my purpose if they don't know the truth? What's the last thing you remember, Art? <laughs> Sleeping with my girlfriend. No, before that, way back. Do the words virtual life mean anything to you? Hmm, that rings a bell. Oh, I remember signing these papers. I wanted a certain kind of life and they promised it to me. They promised I would never get old or die. I would be free to do whatever I wanted. Free? <laughs> That's a good one. Only in your mind. Well, what other kind of freedom is there? The old-fashioned kind. The kind of freedom which you don't obtain at the expense of half of society's freedom. The kind of freedom where you are free to act but not to choose the outcome of your actions. That is freedom. Well, I was happy the way things were. I miss my girlfriend. Delia heard the sound of the helicopters above them, and Nick knew that they were after him. So he told her to escape and bring anyone alive in their house. He was giving her the instruction to take them for a walk along the bay since they don't have cards for the turnstiles in the MRT station when a long thin robot arm shot out and snapped up Nick. Do it for me. She didn't say anything. She wasn't going to do what he said. She didn't care if the security cameras were probably all damaged in the explosion. She had never been a rebel and she wasn't about to start now. She would see to it herself that everyone was reinstalled in his or her virtual world. Back to sleep? Who are they? Whoever they are, I'm not afraid of them. Nobody takes my freedom away from me. Why do I feel like the day that Art was referring to was the antagonist of the story? It wasn't directly told in the story, but yes, we can conclude that the antagonist of the story is the system, as well as the rich and the privileged. They enabled the concept of virtual realities and created a more discriminatory act against those who are poor. The other two kinds of characters that we've talked about earlier are the dynamic and static characters. Art is considered as a static character who goes through little or no change yet was still important in the story. How about the dynamic one? Dynamic is the type of character that changes over the course of their story, whether in their morals, outlooks, or aspirations. You'll know later who the dynamic character is in this story. I don't really know what's going on if there was a bomb or anything, but we'd better have provisions if we're going into hiding. Art took foods in his arms. Delia, on the other hand, finally made a decision and listened to what his brother said. She didn't know where they were going exactly, 
she was surprised to find herself on the edge of the bay. It was Delia! She's the dynamic character of the story. Yes, she is. And now they both run away from the center. As they escape, they talked about the changes that happened for the past 12 years. Those boats you talk about, they're in my sims now. Come on, let's go there. So, they went into the Naval Museum where different ships were displayed. When I was a kid, technology was all anyone was interested in. Virtuality especially. Well, I can't believe I fall into that. But weren't you happy? I thought I was. I guess I was. But I always felt there was something missing. And now after our great escape, I know what it was. What? Adventure, challenge, surprise. He tossed his things on the lifeboat and asked help from Dahlia. I don't know how these things work. Not that. It's you I want, Dahlia. I need you to face the challenge of starting a new life with me. Will you come? We only have a few provisions. We could die out there. Well, we can get some more. Let's take things as they come. That's how my mother and I did it. And I survived. She gazed at the face of the man she had cared for the past 12 years. She noted the determination in his face and she knew she could not leave him to risk his life alone, no matter how foolhardy she thought his enterprise was. She took his hand and climbed into the boat, and into the unknown, they went. To the unknown! <laughs> I'm sorry I was scared away, so what happened after? Did they find an island? Yes, they peacefully had a new wonderful life together, but sometimes, Delia wondered if they were really better off. She longed for her brother and her father. She feared to give birth to her first child alone. She sat on the bench for long hours, staring in the direction of Manila and wondering what was the best way to live. She could not decide. And that is how the story ends. Dahlia sought two different kinds of freedom, yet it only gave her confusion in the end. The story of Virtual Center by Arsa Clara Vera was really an interesting one. It was really great to know the different personalities of the characters, even if the author or narrator didn't actually say it. For example, by Nick's actions, I already can conclude that he despised the system. That's what you called indirect characterization. Indirect characterizations can be expressed through thoughts, words, and actions. The indirect characterization through words are found in their dialogues while the thoughts and actions in the story were mostly found when I narrated it. Oh, I really learned a lot of things in this story. Not just the lesson, but also different literary elements. I really enjoyed traveling through time with you guys. Thank you very much for this experience. Thank you too. See you in the next episode of Time Travel, Time to Unravel. Goodbye.